Who needs an intro? Yeah, he, he, he wrote an intro, and it's so long. It's too much. That I can't. Yeah, okay. So here, here's the one thing that I do worry about after this one. How are you gonna get any better than me? Like, oh my god! A, a, after you do that's this a, one, you're gonna be you're gonna be sitting here interviewing people, and you're gonna be that's, like, "Wow, that's, that's a uh, challenge." Now more people are gonna watch this and say, "Do me next, do me." Yeah, I'm signing up. Yeah, because I'm gonna be better than Jordan. And then it's not gonna happen. Like I'm gonna feel bad for all of those people. <laughs> All of them. You better make it a good one. Yeah, it's it's already good. <laughs> it's already good. Well, guys, welcome to our first episode, our pilot episode of our podcast here at Leaf Johnson Ford. It's called Zero to Sixty by Leaf Johnson Ford, where we're going to interview industry leaders. We're going to interview people from the dealership. We're going to get down to some car knowledge, some industry knowledge, and future things. And our first guest is somebody we've worked with in the past before. This is technically our third project coming up. And it's Jordan Wheeler from RTR Vehicles. Well, hey, thank you for having me. I am very happy to be here. I know when you reached out to me and said that you wanted to do this, I was like, dude, I'm totally down. Because I, I just really felt like this would be something cool and, and fun to do. So let's be clear. I didn't ask. <laughs> yeah, he said, told hey, me. You're, you're already going to be yeah, here. So. You're my first guest. And I was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, so it, it, it panned out perfectly. We put some time into the uh, studio here. Well, actually, Caleb has put a lot of time into it. I appreciate him making it look nice for me. Like, that yeah. means a lot. <laughs> yeah, Caleb back there. I'll have a character next time, like, so you have a little camera, like, what I'm doing. Right yeah, now. so in future episodes, we will have mm -hmm. the producer have his own cam shot. Oh, cool. So he can pull, st so he can pull stuff up. Oh, awesome. It's like some history. Because now, right now, I'm, I'm pulling double duty, so if we want to look something up, okay, uh, I got to pull it up. Hopefully, you can multitask. I can. I okay, can. good deal. So we've done, like I mentioned, we've done three projects together now. Um, our first project was the first RTR build at our Riata Ford location. Mm -hmm. um, we went even crazier and built a 24 Mustang RTR Spec 2 live at SEMA. Mm -hmm. And today we are, well, we, today we scouted the route for Mustang Unleashed. Yeah, so Mustang Unleashed started this year as something that new Mustang owners could go out and really learn a lot about their car, get thrown head first into the Mustang world. Cause a lot of people are finding themselves new to Mustang with S650 in the 2024. Right. So Ford really wants people to feel welcome as part of this brand. So what they're doing is uh, one of the first ones was at uh, Long Beach FD event. So Vaughn was out there, him and Morgan Oldham or uh, Morgan Drifts as some people may know her, we're doing ride-alongs in production vehicles. Yeah. You're learning how to do line lock. You're learning how to do all the great features that the Mustang has. Well, in some areas, you're not able to do the driving portion of it. Like Austin, Texas. Like Austin. <laughs> so for PsychFest, uh, they decided, hey, you know what? We'll have Jordan go there and lead a cruise through the hill country. So they said, hey, just scout some routes see what's going to work best for for everybody so they have a good time a fun time as vaughn always wants everybody to have yeah. i said hands down i can do this and then you know, shot you a call and said hey how do you want to do this <laughs> yeah and uh we definitely felt honored um and after doing the route today with you you picked like we're from here so a lot of these roads we know and we drive them you pick a lot of the um the good ones back there and they're a lot of fun so if you did this cruise by the time you watch this let us know how you liked it so i got a question for you man yeah um so we kind of met where you're already like you're in RTR. I'm here doing media marketing, um, but where did it like was it this always your trajectory? Like where did it all start for you? So no, this wasn't always my trajectory. I <laughs> was so far off from this that it, it's crazy. So I grew up in an automotive family. Uh, they were all Chevy fans, uh, you know. Oh yeah, Chevelles, Camaros, Corvettes, the yeah. whole nine. So then when I got my license, I wanted to do something completely different from what everybody else was doing. So I got caught up in the import craze. And then as I'm graduating high school, not to date myself, but um, that's when Fast and Furious hit theaters. So I'm not judging you. I'm just saying everybody else is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my, my, my first big build that I did was a Mitsubishi Eclipse. Of course, okay. you know, I had to be like Paul Walker. Uh, and then I moved into like RX sevens and stuff like that. My friends had Supras and that's the, the, the automotive route that I was going. But what I wanted to do with my life is I wanted to become a professional wrestler. There it is. Yep. Yeah. I, it was my goal in life to be a professional wrestler. And that's what I did. I was in the gym twice a day, 
six days a week and just training to get built and to do that and then um, learning all the basics uh, to be in the ring. Uh, spent some time in the ring in, in Houston when I came down and that was my my goal. So what 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 was it about wrestling that called to you? Wait, so first it was the Cars, the Eclipse, Fast mm -hmm. and Furious. What was it about wrestling that called you to that? It was the theatrics of it and being able to just really tell a story to people and have fun doing it, which is kind of what makes me do well at what I do now for RTR is just being able to interact with people because um, I, I've done theater before. Uh, a lot of people want to go from theater into movies and stuff like that. But to me, even though that whole world is cool, I've done commercials and television things and stuff like that. We should show the mattress firm. Oh yeah, the mattress firm <laughs> firm commercial. That's so, my passion. <laughs> so uh, Caleb, insert that clip right now. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it, it's cool and it's fun to interact uh, on set and things with the people there. But you don't get feedback in that moment on how you're doing to right. better yourself. Whereas with theater and with wrestling, you do. Um, and I like that and the athleticism of it. Um, but unfortunately, at one point in time, I got sick. So I started losing a ton of weight. And it's hard to put all that muscle back on. And then I tore my ACL, which later turned into my ACL, my meniscus, and shattering my leg. Um, okay. So Did all that happen in training or like wrestling? Uh, so that all happened in training. Wow. Yeah. So then I got really down on myself thinking, okay, now I can't do it. Um, I, I actually auditioned for the WWE before, and then they had a show that was called Tough Enough that ran for a few seasons um, with MTV. And I was called up and I made it to the top 75 out of, I think it was like five or 10,000 people. Wow. And um, I got cut right before television. That was the year that the future WWE champion, The Miz was uh, on there and whatnot. And, uh, between trying to come back from my injuries and whatnot and then hearing that no, I let that get into my head and throw me off. And I was like, I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to do it. I like, did, was it, was it self doubt? It was self doubt, 100%. Because they told me, keep doing this. We like everything that you did. And I had an option that I could go to what was the training camp OVW the following year. But in my head, I was. I was done. So I took all that money that I'd saved up for to go to Kentucky at the time. And I just started feeding that into my love of cars, started doing car shows like hot import nights, which was really, wow, really big at the back. time. Yeah. And, and just fell into the car community. And that was my crutch. And I just fell in love with that. And of course the import scene led to the drifting scene. So Nopi, Hot Import Nights. Yep. I mean, now I'm dating myself. My first Hot Import Nights was actually, I want to say, 2006, like, seven or eight. Right. Yeah. I was in high school. I didn't have a car yet, but I went with some friends from Daytona to Miami, H I N Miami, and that was kind of a moment too where that was like my first real like experience with car culture. Yeah. I remember walking to the venue. The bass was so loud that the lights in the venue were shaking. And like the excitement building up and we're all like dude like we're here <laughs> like hot import nights like i don't know what we expected right yeah but that was my first um big car show in like in like automotive oh, excuse me <laughs> you're excused yeah. <laughs> yeah no that that was the route that i went as well and um f falling in love with drifting and then um so su funny and stupid story how i got into mustangs i want to hear it so um, wait, time out. Everybody has a Mustang story. Yeah, everybody does. Yes, wait, I got I got a stupid one too, uh, but let's let's hear it. So um, I was not a huge fan of Mustang prior to '05. I had friends that had the Fox bodies and whatnot. It it, just, it didn't. It's grown on me in the years since. But I had a car show, uh, Hot Import Nights, up at uh, Soldier Field. So I grew up outside of Chicago. And my car was already there. It was um, my 93 FDRX7. And I'm driving. Where is that car now? Uh, I sold it when I moved to Texas. Oh, God. I had two it? of them. And I regret it. One was an LS and are one a, was a, a you, big turbo rotary. Are so, you a millionaire? No, I'm not because I'm an idiot at that time. God. And, yeah. But now I look at it. I try to just get a shell. And it's like $30,000, $40,000. Yeah. 
But so I'm driving up there and I have a Chevy Blazer, which was my backup winter car. And all of a sudden it just drops the drive shaft. And I, it starts pouring down rain and I'm getting mad. I know we have to be there at a certain wow. time. And I had some money that I had saved up. And I was like, you know what? Let's just go buy a car. And my brother's like, what? I said, yeah, let's just go buy a car to get us there. He's like, dude, you're kind of mad right now. Let's not do this. I was like, no, we're going to go buy a car. So I walked to the nearest Nissan dealership, was going to get a, a Z, and there was nobody there. So the next dealership up the road was a Ford dealership. And, and you're walking. And I'm walking. In the rain. And pouring down rain. I walk up to the dealership like a wet poodle. And I'm like, hey, uh, do you have a manual transmission Mustang here? First person kind of just looked at me soaking wet and just kind of ignored me. I went to the next person and they're like, yeah, it's right over here. I was like, I don't even need to see it. I just want to buy it. And that's how I ended up in my first Mustang. <laughs> and it, I absolutely fell in love with that car. I fell in love yeah. with that car. That was, um, ended up being like my second drift car that I had. And is that it, the one you sent me? Uh, no. So okay. I ended up getting another S197 after that. But um, yeah, I just fell in love with the car. And then from knowing drifting and Vaughn getting into the Mustang, I started following Vaughn. Um, and that led me down my path that eventually led to RTR vehicles. Wow. That's, um, that's a good Mustang story. That's not mine. <laughs> mine started with, uh, again, in high school, not really in the cars. My, bro my older brother was already in the cars. He, ironically, started with RX-7s as well. He had the first generation, and then he had this Turbo 2 RX-7. It was like this forest green with gold wheels, and he, it, like, it arrived to the house like on a flatbed. I was like, what a piece of junk, <laughs> right? And then he got it running, and it was the first time I ever heard a blow-off valve. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is so cool. Like, I just like really getting into these cars. Um, but I specifically remembering my parents take me to school still, and we walk outside. My dad's taking us to school, and there's a white Mustang GT convertible. Right. And we're like, back there, we're like, our parents aren't cool. So we looked at our parents' room, like, is our aunt here? Like, our aunt was cool. <laughs> right. And my dad's like, no, that's your mom's. And I remember we got in it and when he turned it on, I was like, I love V8s. And like, I was enamored by that car. But again, no license, way underage. And I was working at a um, golf and country club. And my parents went off to like a Christmas party. And I remember I was like, well, they're all the way in Daytona. Well, we're all the way over here. How would they know? <laughs> <laughs> so I took the Mustang. Uh, my brother couldn't like take me to work. He had a license already. He couldn't take me to work. And I was like, well, there's a Mustang GT right there. So I took it, right? And I didn't like hot rod it or anything, but I remember just, I wish that drive would never end. <laughs> just going to the golf and country club and back. And my parents didn't know the truth of that until like I was like 28 or 29. Awesome. <laughs> so they were like, what? You guys did what? We're like, yeah, I took it. <laughs> no license. <laughs> But I was I was responsible with it. So my first drift event that I ever went to in my Mustang um, was a bank track. And if you've ever drifted, you know that bank tracks aren't the easiest thing in the world to drift, especially when you're new to drifting. Where was this at? Uh, this was in Rockford, Illinois. Okay. Um, it was the Rockford Motor Speedway. They used to do just like little circle track uh, caged. They, they look like big go-karts, really. Okay. Um, so I went out there and I was drifting and I ended up not paying attention to my tire wear. I was just a young kid thinking, oh, you can just keep going forever. <laughs> and so next thing I know, my tires are just shredded and I start pushing hard towards the wall nose first. And I yank the wheel and spin it in backwards, just crush in the trunk. Oof. And so I end up having to drive that car all the way home. I pull in the driveway and I'm telling my parents, so... The old gravel road over on Grant, I, uh, a dog ran out in front of me, the Copple's dog. They're like, oh my gosh, that dog is always loose. I'm like, I know. <laughs> I spun and I, I hit the edge of the bridge and uh, we took it and yeah, had to get it fixed and everything. And it was like, wow. Do they yeah. know this story? Uh, no, they, they never knew this story. Um, so hopefully they don't search YouTube. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. How old back, were you then? Oh man, I was... Man, I had to have been 20 years old. Yeah. Yeah, oh, maybe happened, a little man. bit more. I don't know. You're not trying to play me off, right? Like, no. I just. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's. Um, no, I've never had any. Uh, I got one close call, but we're just not going to talk about it. My parents really don't know that story. <laughs> and they do watch the content that I put out. Um, so, all that, I know you did work at a dealership at one point. Yeah. Um, so, at what point did you. You got led down the road of RTR. You knew who Vaughn Gittin Jr. was. 
a nopey, hot and import night. So I'm pretty sure you're watching the drift events. Mm -hmm. um, so at what point did you get your, your first RTR vehicle? So I got my first RTR vehicle in 2017 uh, with the S550 Mustang. It was, so I had a 2015 car and uh, somebody hit me, got into an accident, car got mm. totaled. I had all the RTR parts on it. And one of the sales managers at the time lived down the street from me. And he said to me, hey, I heard about your accident. How would you like to have a real RTR? I was like, of course I would. So he set me up with a dealership in Houston and I got the first RTR spec two delivered to a customer. Anything before that had been stuff that was um, for testing or went to one of Vaughn's friends who had one of the cars built, but this was the first one sold through dealership. And I got that car and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and so I was taking it to all kinds of car shows and I happened to say to Mike, I'm like, hey, if you guys ever need this car for anything, let me know. And he happened to say to me, hey, you know what? Actually, we have an event uh, out we in, <laughs> we got a, an event out in California. I know it's kind of far for you. I'm like, I'm there. So I hopped in the car, drove 22 hours straight to go and do wow. a Nitto Tire Auto Enthusiast Day. And that was my first time speaking to Vaughn. I had met him before, got an autograph and whatnot, but this was my first time spending any actual time with him. And he knew where I had gotten my car at. He knew of me. He got down on the ground in his race suit and showed me underneath my car how to adjust the suspension and what I should do. And I was just like, wow, the fact that somebody who is the president of his own company will yeah. get down here and, and show me this kind of time means a lot to me. And that made an impression on me that lasted with me until today, you know, and made me really want to be a part of that world. So at what point did you, did you go from, I guess, being a helping hand on the outside to actually, you know, becoming an employee? Yeah. So, um, I did a few events. I met, um, uh, one of the staff there by the name of Derek Bosman, who, um, just recently left to go work for another race team. Um, and every time RTR was around, he'd say, Hey, you know, if we need a car, Jordan's around. If we need somebody to come and talk about the vehicles, Jordan's around. So I did a few events um, up in Dallas and whatnot and close uh, spectator events, stuff like that. And I did some time at the dealership, as you, you had pointed out. And then um, I transitioned from that into uh, vehicle part sales. So I was kind of building my resume on the backside without truly being aware of it. And uh, I was at an event up in Dallas, uh, one of the FD events, and Vaughn just heard me talking to fans out there about the car. I wasn't just one of those people that, like, and there's nothing wrong with this. When we have somebody bring one of their vehicles out, display your vehicle and go have fun. Just go have fun. And that's all we want. But I loved the brand and wanted to stand there and talk about it. That's what I like doing. So he actually pulled me to the side in between intermission and said, Hey, so what, what are you doing right now? I'm like, well, you know, I'm selling auto parts, just left the dealership. Um, yeah. Why? He said, well, we have an event coming up. It's a dealer event out in Vegas. Um, we're going to have a car out there and we're going to be unveiling something new, which at the time I didn't know, but ended up becoming the series one. Okay. And uh, we just want to have you come out there and see how you like it. And he's like, this isn't a guarantee of employment, nothing like that. It's just an opportunity. See how you do. And I said, sure. And I jumped at the chance and I went out there and I did that event. And then next thing you know, I, I get a call. Like, hey, we really liked what you did here. Yeah. We kind of want you to be there. And now the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Now you're now you moved on up quite a few times. I mean, we've done again, I, like I said, we're on a third project together. Um, you're knowledgeable in the space and you've, I mean, to be fair, I've, I've known about the brand for so long. In fact, when the first RTR came out, the white one, which was his father's, correct? Mm -hmm. I met his dad at the soldiers burnout thing on Fort Hood. Um, I was just kind of hanging on the side of the trailer, like on Fort Hood for mm -hmm. Cavazos now. And his dad came out and he just like pulled me in there and he was, Vaughn was doing autographs and started talking to me about like the history of the first RTR. But I remember the day before when I was actually at FD, he, Vaughn handed me the flyer for the RTRs and it had a white one. It had like a green one on there. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I have them somewhere, right? Because I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I keep everything. <laughs> um, but I remember that. I, don't, I mean, again, I was a private in the Army. Like I was 
I was like, I can't afford a, I can't afford a Mustang, <laughs> let alone an RTR one. So I never got to experience it until we built that first one together. And that's when I was like, oh yeah, these cars are, this is different. Yeah. Right. And every time I drive it, I'm cheesing right now because we just drove them. Mm -hmm. I'm always like, dude, this car does everything I've wanted my last couple cars to do. Like, especially in terms of like autocross and road racing. And I was telling Caleb that as well, where I was like, you don't understand. I've driven C8s. I've driven Hellcats, Demon. I've driven so many different cars. And this car does everything I wanted my car to do. Like, I'm confident that if I were to take a spec two as it comes, maybe change the tires, some stickier, that I could probably do really good in autocross. Yeah. Whereas, like, in the past, we won't mention what I was driving, but it was definitely holding me back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that's one thing that I tell so many people that I talk to now is that I was an owner before I worked for the company. So I live what I preach. I'm not just out there trying to sell something. I truly love what we do. Yeah. And I, I've had our F-150. Um, I've had a couple of uh, different versions of our Mustang now. Um, I've driven every vehicle that we have ever built. And I just, I love what we do. And the emphasis is always on the experience. And that's one thing that we talk to people and that we try to convey in everything that we do. It's about the experience. And we, we, we talk about redefining performance. And it's because so many people get caught up in that horsepower number. Like we, yeah. we could be cruising around in 1100 horsepower, whatever. But can you use it? Yeah, but can you use it? Where are you using that at? How is that when you try to take it uh, just on a back road, road cruise with your friends? How is it when you try to take it to work? How is it when you just try to go to the grocery store? You know, you've got to think about those things. And handling is the biggest part of any vehicle. You can put as much horsepower at a vehicle. If you can't make that thing handle, it's not worth the money that you're spending on it. And we want it to be an enthusiast experience that when you hop in there, it's got enough power for you and it's got more than enough handling for you that you will reach your limit before that car reaches its. Yeah, no, you guys done a great job. Again, I've driven so many different cars and it's every time I drive one, Caleb actually questioned me when I was driving because he saw how much fun I was having. <laughs> and um he said, why, why are you buying an F-150 again? I mean, you can just get this. Caleb, said, I've been asking the same question. Man. I said, Caleb, I need, I need to tow and move stuff and haul a car and whatnot, but trust me. I have told this man, <laughs> I've told this man that if he gets an RTR, I will tow his car's places <laughs> with my truck. But you know, it is, it's neither here nor there. That's an, another time, another there. place. I just need a truck, man. Every man needs a truck. Yeah, I got you, Every I got man you. Needs a truck. I say that as a guy who has a truck. So. I know that. <laughs> I know that. And it's, uh, so you mentioned, again, the drivability and everything. I've been with you, and you've taken your RTR Spec 5, I mean, one, across the country. Two, I've, you've taken it to track days, and you've beat on it. You've beat on it here at Coda, Circuit of the Americas, and you've actually enjoyed your car. Yeah. I, that is, out of all the cars that I've ever driven, and I've driven a lot of cars, this is my favorite. Like there's nothing about this car that I don't love. And it's not just from my experience, it's from the experience that people have around it. Like seeing little kids run up and want to take their photo yeah. with it, um, to pulling up to a gas station, just having people ask me questions about it and just teaching them about the brand and then hearing their Mustang story or hearing their story about a cool car that they once had. And you see that that creates a memory in their head of, of special time that they had around a vehicle. Or maybe this is the first vehicle that they ever fell in love with. Cause you know, I'm 43 years old. So we have, old. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we have a lot of young, young followers now. We, we have a lot of young followers now that they've grown up truly with RTR my kids being some yeah. of those people. So it's cool to see that they are the, the ones that have the, the posters of the RTR up on the wall, the same way I had posters of the vehicles I fell in love with up on the wall. Yeah, and man, to that degree, one thing that's always impressed me, um, I see it in the videos, I see it in the content, and it's always about community and passion. And I didn't, we didn't get, to, I'm gonna say we, because Caleb was part of it as well, we didn't get to live that and so we started working here and we started partnering with you guys. And I mean, we took it to a pretty high level, but never once did we feel like we were like kind of impeding on somebody's work. We always felt like we were part of the team and everything was very welcoming and it made it a ton of fun. 
Where I mean, he's like, I told it's him. It's easier to work, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> I will probably never do that again. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I, we hear that a lot from people when we go places. Yeah. We'll hear that um, your display is the coolest display, and you guys have so much going on, and it feels like a fun place to be, and this is where everybody wants to be. And we also hear that we're so approachable, whether it be from yeah. our customer service. Like, hey, we, when we reach out to somebody, there's actually a person reaching back out to us. Um, when we go to the track, Vaughn takes the time to talk to us. The mechanics take the time to talk to us. Your merch people take the time to talk to us because all of us were that person. And I think what helps you succeed in life, not just as a business, but as a person, is not to forget that you were that person once. We're not the people that are gonna sit there because we've been around all these cool cars and the race car drivers and be like, yeah, okay. No, we're gonna be like, hey, we remember when we were that person. Yeah. Have fun with us. And mine was still, mine was not that long ago. So, <laughs> I mean, like I said, FD Texas, I was in the army. I didn't know what it was. I mean, I didn't know who Vaughn Gittin Jr. was. That's the funny story is I was new to Texas, bored out of my mind. I walk into the PX to buy a Monster Energy drink and there's this cutout board of Vaughn holding a monster next to the, the Monster Energy drinks. And the PX is like a gas station. Let me clarify that. I know not everybody knows what that is. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's a smoke show, right? And that's my story. Anyways, I had to work that day. Clearly, I snuck out. If you, I met his dad. Um, so I got with the boys, and I was like, yo, like we got to go to this FD thing. Dude, it's like a rolling circus. Like I didn't know what it was. <laughs> and they're like, well, let's do it. So we went from, you know, from Central Texas up to Dallas. And again, it was like we caught the second half of FD because mm -hmm. we left so late. And uh, when you walk into Texas Motor Speedway and you look to your right when you go through the tunnel, um, it was Dean Carney's Viper mm -hmm. shooting sideways. And me and my three friends, we all looked at each other like, what is this? <laughs> right? But we came to see the guy on the cutout, <laughs> yeah. right? Because we're like, a buddy of mine had a GT California Special. Another friend of mine had a um, Trans Am WS6. And I had a Dodge Charger SRT8, the very first one that came out. So, like, back then I was balling, <laughs> yeah. right? And uh, so we all went and we're like, what is this? Like, we knew drag racing. That's really all we knew. And our first drift event ever was FD. So again, we met him and everything. Um, and that's how that story pans out. So to go from that, meeting him there, to again, being part of it at SEMA last year and building a car, which I'll never do again. It was so hot, it was so <laughs> exhausting. Um, that experience in itself is like, it just ranks really high for us. Yeah, and we were very happy to have you guys be a part of that. And you know, speaking to, to your story of not knowing who Vaughn was before that, before I jump back into what we did at SEMA is, I remember we had an RTR owner that he was 73 years old. Oh, wow. He was out in Florida, walked into a dealership, wasn't even going there to look at an RTR. Had no idea what RTR was, had no idea who Von Gittin Jr. was. But he saw the car. Saw the car sitting on the showroom floor. It just got built and said, I have to have that thing. Him and his wife bought it and they cruised all over the place with it. They actually drove it up to FD Atlanta bought oh. all of the merch we're head to toe in Vaughn Gittin Jr. <laughs> RTR merch That's they funny. said we had no idea who you were your company was we loved the car and then we started researching it and we fell in love with the brand and we drove all the way up here from southern Florida to meet you and he walked out there and signed their car and everything for him it's just those are it's cool to know that not only does everybody have a Mustang story but now we're part of a brand that people are starting to get yeah. RTR stories and at SEMA, we got a chance to build on one of those stories. The year before, we had built what we believe is the very first car to ever be fully built on the SEMA floor. Right. Yeah. That's where we saw it. Yes. And that, that was crazy to be a part of that. We were a part of that with Gear Wrench Tools. They brought us out. We built that car really in, in, in two days. Um, and we had some great partners that helped pitch in and stuff. And, and we handed that off to the customer in front of a live audience. And we're like, we have to do this again. We have to do this again. Yeah. And then when we found out that Shell was going to be bringing us back and we were going to be back out front, taking over that whole area, we we're yes. like, okay, we have to do this. So I remember getting a call saying, hey, <laughs> what you guys did the previous year at SEMA building a car, what would it take for us to be a part of that? And I said, all right, let's do it. And I just remember hearing, 
that's it? I was like, yeah, that's it. So the I, I like working with you guys. It's awesome. We we wanted to do this again. So, yeah, let's so do it. So the back end of that story is uh, Caleb, Antonio, and myself. Were, were, did we go to lunch? I think so. Yeah, we were at lunch. So we were at lunch, and we were driving back, and we are just, like, we just talking about SEMA. Like, we need to do something – Something different this year. The year prior, we took our Maverick and unveiled it in the Toyota Tread Pass, uh, Lee Johnson Ford and Celine partnership. And that was fun and everything. I was like, but we need something more involved. And then we're driving, we're like, oh, dude, what if we just build an RTR like, at the show, like at, at SEMA? Like, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And then we're like, I don't know. I looked at Antonio, I was like, call Jordan. So on his truck, he calls you. And that's when we had the conversation. And again, we were like, that's, that's all it took. <laughs> the, the back part of that story, because I know the president, such a cool guy, Jeff Buell, he's going to watch this video. It's funny because we asked permission afterward. <laughs> we had to get all the logistics, everything planned out. And then we're like, can we do this? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it planned out. It planned out great. It turned out to be a great week. Um, the amount of people that came up. I just told you another story. Yeah. Puerto Rico. Yeah. I met that gentleman two years prior at SEMA. Um, and then we connected on social media, following each other, and we kept up to date with one another. And then last SEMA, he hit me up, and he's like, where are you at? And I just sent him, like, a clip of where I was at. I was like, I'll be here all day. Right? I can't move. <laughs> so, <laughs> And he came by and saw it. And then, like, not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, he tagged me in that video. You know, he said, thank you, thank you, Brian, for an RTR vehicles, Lee Johnson, for helping me figure out how to put this car together. I'm like, dude, RTRs in Puerto Rico? And I'm Puerto Rican. I was born in Puerto Rico. So I was like, dude, that, like, you know that's cool yeah yeah and th that's another thing that i love about rtr is we we say that we're available to all not for everyone and that's because we're not going to exclude anyone we're not going to be everybody's cup of tea but we're here for everybody and it doesn't matter where you come from what your background is it's all about the love of the vehicle and that experience so um th that's what i like and when you get a group of rtr owners together rtr enthusiasts it's multicultural Mul yeah. there's it spans it spans all age groups from young kids all the way to to the elderly and i love being a part of that and and being at sema we were right in the heart of that we had people from all over the world coming up to us i mean every country that you could think of that was there was coming up and and i know you made fun of my spanish yeah i did <laughs> i was like I bro i'm speaking so much english <laughs> that i had to break it down and, and, and here's what I one thing that I would like to point out, though, is you talk about how hard it was for you, how you'd never want to do that again. He was just there building the car, getting filmed. OK, I was also <laughs> tossing people in and out of cars. Yeah, I was splitting back. hosting time, duties time out, with time, Jared Dienda. Time out. Time out. Riff. <laughs> time out. He'd walk back. Caleb, you saw me. Yeah, I saw I'm there sweating my perm out. I'm walking back and forth <laughs> and I'm like, Caleb, I'm hot. To be fair, his voice was gone. Oh yeah, yeah, it was bad. I remember. It was bad. <laughs> Your voice. And, and <laughs> what was what was funny is so I'm always I'm always such a loud person, and I've oh, never no. really needed a mic. <laughs> and then I was I was yelling to everybody there at that event, and then like halfway through the last day, somebody comes up to me like, "Do you want one of the mics?" And I'm like, w "What?" <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, we got mics and speakers. We can give you one of those." I was like, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you're gone. I remember that. But you know what? I will, I will say this. I also put you to work as well because you and uh, another RTR owner, Isaac, you guys were throwing shirts out to the crowd for Shell yeah. while, while I was out there hosting. I, they asked for help. Yes. And I remember I was so tired. <laughs> and like when somebody asked for help, we're all equally tired. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's exhausted, right? I was Last so, day of SEMA. So exhausted I went to sleep in the back of the trailer for a couple hours. <laughs> I remember. I that. just, I just couldn't. I was like, I'm shutting down. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, what's her name? I can't remember her name. She's with Fun Haver. She's the one who came up asking for help. Oh my god, I'm so. Bad. I know exactly who it is, but I'm liking watching you struggle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Yolo. It was Yolo. Yolo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She came up and said, like, like, hey, are you guys like busy? Can you help? I was like, man, I really don't want to be out there in the sun. But I was like, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And we started moving those boxes. I was like, oh, God, it's a lot of boxes. Yeah. yeah. But that's another one of those things where it plays into, like I said, I, I what I loved about wrestling is the interaction, the immediate reaction you get from the fans. Because you saw while we were out there, I'm, I'm shouting out to the crowd and I'm getting reactions from one side, not the other side. So then all you have to do is overly hype up the other side yes. to get these other people going. And then while you're throwing out free stuff to them, 
and then when you have the pit party back by the rig yeah. and then you just look out and for for a person standing on that little stage that we have it's a sea of people and you're live in front of them there's no second takes there's nothing there's no yeah. cut edit and redo it you're yeah. there i lost my voice there because i was having people cheer and whatnot but you have to yell yeah because not just hundreds of people talking and you got to get them hyped up so they can get the free socks or shirts or whatever it is. Yep. And I mean, and they're like clawing at it. It was, yeah. it was slightly nerve wracking. I've never done anything like that. Yeah. It's crazy. But I was like, I was like, we're here. We're a team. Let's do it. Yep. Yep. It was yeah. fun. fun. Isaac too. I mean, he stepped up. Yeah. And Isaac's such a quiet person and, and he really stepped out of his shell there and had a lot of fun, but it's cool again to bring people in to be a part of that because we could have easily just been like, okay, no, we'll toss it out ourselves or no, we won't, we won't give it out. But it's like, we have people here that want to be a part of this. And I, I've said to you before is, you know, everybody works a job. And as much as I love my job, this is a job. So it's not always going out and thro sp throwing out free stuff to the fans and spending time with the fans. Sometimes it's yeah. just head down in spreadsheets, looking at sales, looking at numbers, trying to figure out what is the next thing that we're going to release to the yep. people. And you start to lose track of that. And then you start to think, oh man, I'm getting tired of this, or I'm tired and I just want to go home, or I just want to do this, or I want to do that. And then you get out on the road and you get to interact with, with the fans yeah. and you it revitalizes you because you see that there's all these people out there that would love to be a, just a part of what you're doing. Whether it's helping assemble the rig, helping put out the merch, helping clean up the tire dust. There's so many people that would love to be a part of that. and. I am truly living my dream. So anytime I have those moments where I'm like, man, today is kind of rough. I think good because this is what I wanted. Yeah. This is what I fought for. This is what everybody that comes up to me wants. And I have it time to enjoy it. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good perspective. I mean, that's a great perspective. I mean, I have to, I can't agree more because this job here, I know it's a dealership, but the stuff we've done in the last two years and the last year with Caleb here, it's like, it blows people's minds. They're like, you do what? Yeah. Where do you work? I'm like, I work for an auto group that has a vision of what the future looks like. That's not just, um, it's not just a sale. It's about building community, yep. right? And then when I came into this role, this is not what my job looked like in the beginning. I was like, okay, entry level, just graduated college fresh out the army, we'll do social media, do some marketing. And then we just kept leveling it up and leveling it up and leveling it up. And they just kept handing me the keys. And then when I realized like, wow, they're like, they're trusting us so much to build this thing to what it could be, where it could be a hub of people, um, of a community, uh, that man, we can take this to the sky's the limit. Yeah. <laughs> to an extent, right? Yeah. And you can kind of see it when you guys brought the spec two here for the first time, all the support that came out. Yeah, very good turnout. That was a good turnout, right? And our car shows are, I think people might be a little weary at times of like, oh, it's a dealership car show. But we've set such a vibe where mm -hmm. even the people who work here bring their toys and put in the car show and go to work because it's like a Saturday, Yeah, <laughs> right? There's like taco trucks, there's DJs, and it's about building that community. You know, and we, we've talked about your, your journey through meeting Vaughn and being part of the RTR extended family. Uh, what I would say too, that is uh, a feather in your cap is with what you've done here at Leaf Johnson, before Josh Hip was our dealer director, I handled sales with dealerships. I didn't find you, Josh didn't find you, Vaughn found you. Vaughn oh, yeah. sent me a screenshot of y'all's Instagram and said, hey, I, I, check this out. I feel like they got a vibe. I feel like they would understand the brand and they would get it and be able to take it to our customers. And that's how we first found Leaf Johnson. Yep. So, I mean, it was enough to make Vaughn go, hmm. And if you've ever seen Vaughn, like he's a guy who's very in the moment with the fans, but when he steps away, he has so much going on, oh, so yeah. much going on. Um, so many high level things that I don't even know how he fits it in that brain of his, but to be able in that fraction of a second to catch his attention, make him go, wow. You know, I mean, that's, yeah hats off to y'all and and i've enjoyed working with you as well we have so many great dealers in our network and texas is such a a big 
area for us and for the entire country. I mean, it's the largest state. But we get so many inquir inquiries from Texas, and we need to have some champion dealers here. And I'm glad to say that you guys are, are one of those, and you, you've been helping extend the brand. I mean, you're in Austin. I mean, this is this is a great area to be in if you want i mean we were just cruising these back roads so if you're an enthusiast Dude. great place to be yeah. if you're someone young if you're someone who just has the spirit of youth this is a great place to be and to be able to experience that in an rtr and know that you can come here and and work with someone like yourself and your team that that gets the brand and knows the brand yeah. i mean in the early days that those were the biggest struggles is just getting people to understand it you know and and step away from what they were used to not that what they were used to was bad but there's there's always room for change yeah that's um i appreciate that thank you that means a lot to be honest that was not the plan <laughs> when i started <laughs> when i started this job um i have my own social media channels and i was like well what do i like right what do i like i was like well i like drifting cars so we'll post some of these RTRs up. You know, they're always, RTR was always posting, for, they still do post fresh content. So I would just take that content and repost it in the stories. Um, I focused heavy on Mustang and that Mustang community and then Bronco and Bronco community. And when I first started here, you couldn't even buy a Bronco. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, I remember that. When I first started here, it was the chip shortage and I walked outside and there was no cars on the lot. Yeah. And I remember feeling like, there's nothing for me to photograph or video. That's right, as we launched Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what did I do? I was like, well, let's do a little bit of reposting on stuff that's cool and visceral and we'll keep people's attention and let them know, like, yeah, we're hip, right? We know the lingo, that kind of thing. And then I just, I just owned it from that point on. And that's kind of where that stemmed from. And for it to develop into the relationship was even more amazing because that's like a year into the making by the time we actually met. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was about a year. Um, so that's – thank you. Yeah. Hey, no problem. I don't say many nice things about you, but um, that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> and and I, I think it's one, one thing that's worth pointing out and that I like is the, the fact that you and I have become friends because of this. Yeah. yeah, it was originally just a business relationship. And then getting to know you and especially too when you're wrenching over a car together, because that was truly the <laughs> first time that you and I really <laughs> spent together. You get was, to know somebody. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was like, okay, this guy ain't too bad because you don't, you never know when you go into situations, you know? Yeah. Um, like I said, we have plenty of cool dealers, but it's like, you're going into a new setting. You're trying to film, you're trying to learn this person. Um, and you know, we've done many things together since then, not just, uh, between dealership and, and RTR, but, uh, yeah. uh, outside of it and just our own personal content. And it's, just, it's been cool to be able to meet people through this adventure, you know? Yeah. And I still got to smoke you on autocross. Yeah, you can still try. But here's the thing, though. At the end of the day, I've already said that I feel that you have a chance at beating me on autocross. But I have a strong chance. Yes, he has a strong chance, but he has no chance whatsoever when we get on a big track. I'm not even going to argue that one. <laughs> that one I won't even argue. But you know what? Here, here's the thing, too, though, that we can, we can both agree on is when you first sit behind the wheel of your Mustang to drift for the first time. I'm going to be sitting there with a big smile on my face and here we go, boy, <laughs> here we go. Yeah. But uh, again though, but that's building a, a, a Mustang story. That's another story. So another Mustang yeah. story. Yeah. And it's, it's great that I'm able to work where I do. You're able to do what you do and we're able to collaborate on things yeah. and build on that because again, that speaks to a whole new generation because it's, we can speak to anybody from the standpoint of we have children, we have relationships, we know what you need to go get groceries and go, go do the day-to-day. Yeah. -day. But then you know what? On the fun side, we know what it takes to do these other things. So it's being well-rounded in a field through experience. And the thing is, a lot of people, and there's nothing wrong with this, just the, the vehicle is utilitarian. But for us, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's and a we lifestyle. live it. And we, we try to spread that and share it with other people. It's a lifestyle. Every vehicle. Man, I ordered a uh, 24 F-150 xlt 302a like just like the creature comforts yeah fx4 and uh, the first thing my wife says is you're not gonna touch this one right i said are you <laughs> kidding me i said the first thing i'm gonna do is lift this thing <laughs> it's not even gonna leave leave johnson and you won't see it at the house until after it's lifted yeah so that's the first thing i'm doing <laughs> so i i've had a few f-150s um and right after i started with rtr i went and i got a red one a new one and uh 
Was it like the like a hot red or is it with that? Yeah, uh, race red. It was race, race red. red. Oh, and that's, the yeah. first thing that happened is that turned into RTR F one fifty number one. So <laughs> and then I, I got the vehicle, it had like two hundred miles on it, and that was mostly from just test drives. Was it a five oh or a three five? It was a three five. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the three five. Yeah. I love the EcoBoost and and I'm even gonna say this, the EcoBoost Mustang is nothing to turn your nose up at. It's not. It's it's very light in the nose. It's very nimble. It, it's probably a better autocrosser than the V8 is. Yep. Um, it's a really good vehicle. And you can feel the weight difference in those yeah. things. They, they got some punch. Um, but anyways, um, it was the 3.5. I got it 200 miles on it. And by the end of the year, I had 45,000 miles on it. I wow, drove across year. the country. Yeah. To, to all of our dealers and to all the FD events. And that's another thing. I, <laughs> you know, you talk about how you would never build uh, a car at SEMA again, which we all know is a lie. But <laughs> I, I said after I did that trip around the country, I would never do that again. But uh, you've done it again. Yeah, I've done it again. <laughs> but it was so cool because you were, I was able to see so much. I have seen every state capital that there is within the continental oh, United wow. States. I have seen most of our big national landmarks. I've been on Route 66. You know, I've been on I-10 from Florida to California. I've driven the, the wow. Pacific Coast Highway. Like, all of this is because of RTR and my passion for vehicles. And yeah. And to anybody out there that wants to follow a dream or a passion or loves vehicles, just just start. Pick up a camera, follow your dream, do get behind the wheel. It doesn't matter what you have. Just go out there and start following and experience this world. And there's no better way to do it than behind the wheel of a vehicle. And if it's a Mustang, you're gonna have tons of smiles. You're gonna have tons of smiles. Yes. It's a little hard to jump into my Mustang right now after driving the cars we did today, but definitely chase those dreams. Um, that's how I ended up here. A lot of the stuff we've done here has been pretty surreal for myself on a personal level. Yeah. Like, I never thought I would do the stuff that I've done. And now, you know, the future of the things that we're planning, too. So it's just surreal. Yeah. And it, it, it's so it's so crazy, too. Just in the time that I have spent around you in this dealership, the growth that I have seen, and even the development of your social media presence. And in such a world where social media is king, to be able to yep. convey that to a generation. And, and even though this right now is long format, there's so much that you have to do with short format, okay? Like, how do you grab that attention in, in 30 seconds, in 20 seconds? Really, if you don't grab people's attention in the first three seconds, yeah. I don't know, you're like me, you dive into the analytics. And I've had the, the fortune of being able to work around guys like David, that dude in blue, Adam LZ, uh, Cletus McFarlane, yep. and just to see how their brains work um, Amelia Hartford, you know, all, all these people and to see how their brains work and how they understand the analytics of things is really cool. And you guys have unlocked that because yep. when you're digesting so much social media, but you're also trying to figure out, you know, what vehicle do I want? What's going to fit me? What's going to suit yep. me? You found a way to do that in a way that's educational and entertaining as Jared DeAnda likes to say is edutainment. Um, yeah, and I, I love that phrase because you're able to entertain people, keep their their conscious on what you're doing and feed them information that's useful. Yeah, and that's, I mean, Caleb is like, he's the king of that. He's like, let's make it fun. Like, what can we do to make it fun? What can we do that's out of the box? Because naturally we look at um, our competitors' content, right? Mm -hmm. And we are so different. And don't get me wrong, there's times we've questioned one another and said, is the route we're taking the correct route? right but yeah. what we're trying to do it's up on the wall is break the status quo and that's in every aspect like what do you expect in a car buying experience what do you expect out of a media from an auto group and again if you look at our channels if you really go back and look at it dude no dealership has done the stuff we've done yeah. right so but again that's built community and like it builds brand and yeah we dive into the analytics and i mean we're still not happy and the reality is we're only year two we yeah. just started year three and he started year two technically like a week ago yeah so looking it's hard uh professor i just spoke at texas state university about media to the mm -hmm. seniors and he said when in doubt zoom out and i'm like you're right because i've have everything tracked when i look at day one and i look at where we're at today i'm yeah. like oh dude we've grown like three thousand times right? yeah so it's like and that that makes us like okay keep going and to your point of emilia and adam and all these great icons in our industry now They've been doing it for years. Yeah. Sometimes I forget that they're like on year like 10, 11, yep. 12, or in year two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's crazy. I you look at somebody like uh, TJ Hunt, who's been doing this for, I believe, 10 years. He just celebrated 10 years yeah. of his channel. Like, dude's been doing this since he was in mom's garage, you know? Brian. So you it, even uh, people like DDE, 10, yeah. 10 plus years, you know? So yeah. to cover that kind of ground. And one thing that has really helped RTR is the way that we uh, process entertainment for people and our social media. Um, we have, I think, the best media team in, in the industry in terms of what we put out in terms of content. And timing, um, speed. Yes, it's so quick. Yeah. We genuinely, at an event, if you walk by a rig, you will see at the end of that rig a yes. group of people on laptops uploading stuff. Um, Jaron walks around with uh, uh, Jaron Cole, who's our community manager for RTR. So if you guys see anything that's posted on RTR vehicles, Instagram or Facebook, that's Jaron. Uh, he walks around with a full backpack full of stuff. So I've he can, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that dude's skinny, but that backpack is big. That backpack <laughs> has got to weigh like 90 pounds. Oh, yeah, he Marine and, level. <laughs> yes. And he's walking around with that because that's what we have to do to be able to get the content out to people. Um, because we want them to know what the brand is, what we're doing. We want, if yeah. you can't be there, we want you to feel like you were there, you know? Yeah. And that's part of it is feeling like you're a part of it. And you guys have been able to find a way to do that here at a dealership level, which is really unheard of. Um, you'd asked me before, you know, is there anybody else out there that does it at our level? There's only a handful. And I yeah. mean, we work with dealers all across the world. And I was able to only name you like three that I think yeah. much at that level. And that's not me knocking anybody. That's just me saying, step your game up because this is where the game is going. Yep. You know, um, we have some dealers that they just crush it with the face to faces um, and word of mouth. But if you're going to get out there, there has to be some type of social media presence um, yep. to let people know who you are. And when you do that, whether it's us sitting here talking, whether it's myself talking to the camera for RTR or Jaron doing a post for RTR vehicles, it's you're telling people who you are. You're telling them why would I, why would you want to do business with me, you know? And it's making that connection because everything in life is connections. Dude, a hundred percent. And to your point about the face to face and the online thing. So when it comes to online, like people are starting now to piece that it's it's me, mm -hmm. right? Which is kind of cool because like I've gone to cars and coffee and somebody would be like, "Yo, Leif Johnson," and then somebody sure I'd be like, "Yo, Toronto." Yeah, and I'm like, "Yes and yes." <laughs> like, yeah, you're both afraid. <laughs> um, but our dealership is pretty impressive. I think um, has won the Ford President's Award. Like only a hundred dealers get it nationwide, thirteen years in a row. That's awesome. They just announced that we got it again. That's cool. So, and that's based off uh, customer feedback and surveys, but it's not just off sales; it's service as well. So they both have to be on par in order to get like this certain award. And Ford Motor Company will come here. It's actually pretty cool because we always eat good, right, Caleb? <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, dude, they set the spread out. It's, it's such a special moment for everybody in the dealership because it's like, hey, for another year, your hard work and dedication paid off mm -hmm. by doing right by people. Yeah. That's the best part, right? And that's things you typically don't hear from a dealership. Um, but we'll be celebrating that again here pretty soon. That's awesome. So then on the media side, Caleb and I, you know, we're cranking down, we're doing our things. I've been able to actually loop in a lot of the sales team to want to be part of the videos. And some, um, my main sales guy, Colin, he's the one I always go to. Mm -hmm. He's always like, yeah, dude, let's do it. He's like, dude, somebody told me the other day they saw me on the Explore page. He's like, let's do another one. Let's do another <laughs> one. And I'm like, perfect, bro. Let's keep going. And it's, um, it's always about changing it up. Yep. That's kind of been not hard. But in the beginning, I was constantly trying to see like what works, what works, what works. Yeah. Again, diving into those analytics. And now that people want to be in on it, right, it makes it easier because yeah. I'm like, great, something new. Yeah. Like, let's do this together. Let's see how it does. Um, but yeah, it's been really good. Really proud of our team here. So how, how did you feel the first time you went out and somebody recognized you from one of those videos? What was the first time somebody recognized me? Like, how, how, how did you feel? Was it awkward for you? Yeah, it's always awkward. So for me, it was awkward. The first time oh. that, that somebody yeah, yeah. recognized me from one of the videos, I was like, huh? And I had you know, one person that wanted to, to take a photo with me. And at first I wanted to say no, because <laughs> I always in my head, even though I have fun doing what I'm doing, I always, I'm, I'm not a Vaughn Ginger, I'm not a Chelsea Denofa. But at the same time, I think like, if this makes this person happy, for this yeah. moment in time, yeah, let's let's do it. And that's the same way that those guys are because they're not big headed. It's just, hey, we're yeah. here to have fun and these people are joining us. So the first time somebody like actively recognized us in public 
was when we went to the spec two reveal. This is a great story. So Antonio and I, we rented a Mustang mm -hmm. in Florida in Orlando that, to go yeah. to the reveal. And um, we didn't go all the way to the top. I don't, I can't remember why, but we parked like two levels down. Yeah, I probably didn't let you. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> <No. laughs> so now you want to let us in. So we start walking up just like the actual like parking garage and a Ford Maverick is coming down and cars are coming down. Right. And this guy like violently pulls out in front, like in front of us and we're walking and the passenger window goes down. This thing is murdered out. Mm -hmm. Right. And he goes, are you guys leave Johnson? And Antonio looks at me. He's like, that depends. Do we owe you money? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy started laughing. And then he's like, no, no, I've, I've seen your stuff. You guys got that Maverick. And then uh, I stirred up this whole conversation. But that was the first time in public we've both been recognized. But again, it was very like, <laughs> yeah. the, the way he pulled up was like, are we getting mugged? <laughs> so the reason I ask you that is, isn't to stroke egos or talk about who's getting what done out there, but it's to talk about the reach of what you're doing. Because yeah. it, whether it's myself, Vaughn, Chelsea, you in front of a camera for a brand, if you're putting out content on a regular basis, which you need to, and you're going to places and people don't recognize your brand or they don't recognize who is promoting it, it means it's not getting to where it needs to. Right. So the fact that you can go out and people can recognize you from that content speaks about the content that you're doing. It's reaching the people that you want it to. It has nothing to do with, man, somebody, somebody saw me today and it was awesome. It means yeah. that what you're doing is working and you need to just keep doing it. Yeah. And again, to the point, that happened in Orlando. Orlando, like, Florida. Yeah. We're from Austin, Texas. Yep. <laughs> but again, it was kind of surreal. I remember Antonio and I were like, like, dude, it's like, we, we kind of had that talk like, dude, it's like working. Yeah. Like we're known for that one thing so far. Yep. Right. So that's pretty good. It wasn't until I think after the first year where like, again, I would go to cars and coffee and someone would say, Hey, you from Leaf Johnson. Yep. And I'm like, yeah, I just own it. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so one quick story I got to tell before this winds down is we had a new person start at RTR last year. Um, and <laughs> he was doing assembly for us, putting together parts, helping out with builds and stuff early on his name is michael and i was late for a meeting and i was running through the building it was my first now were you late because you were showing your car to gas station no i was not no, no. <laughs> so i'm running through the building trying to get to this meeting and, and michael says hey are you jordan i'm like yeah man what's up and he's like i've watched all your videos i was like thanks and i just kept walking and i get into a meeting and i'm in there with our customer service lead uh five-star gym and I'm like, dude, I had to sound like such a jerk to Michael right now. Like, I think that I'm that big guy from yeah. that did a video. And he's like, yeah, so let's milk this. So <laughs> the next the next day I come in and, and, and we're, we're doing our morning meeting. And I walk in and Michael's staying there and Jim is sitting down. And I'm like, hey, Michael, how are you doing today, man? And he's like, I'm doing great, Jordan. How are you? I'm fantastic. I, I turned to five-star Jim. I'm like, I put my coffee in front of him. Jim, what do you think this is? <laughs> and he said, is that not a caramel macchiato? I was like, no, it is not a caramel macchiato. When I am in town, you only have one job to do and you failed. And I just sat down and we didn't even tell him. And we just went about the meeting like nothing happened. And and just the look on his face was so priceless. And the, if, if he watches this, this is his first time he's heard the back end of oh, that story. No. <laughs> so, but no, it's, it's again, a fun atmosphere, a fun place to work with. And Let's I absolutely it. love it. Working with fun people. So I know we're pretty much out of time here, but yeah, um, this has been, this has been good. What's, um, what's in the future for you? Um, wow. A lot. Um, so there's many, many things that are happening right now in RCR, big level things that I can't even get into. How about but, you? Uh, but. Even the things that I'll be doing, I can't even get oh, wow. into. Yeah. But what I will say is we we have some stuff coming up. We have the Mustang Unleashed like we're going to be doing. Um, in a couple hours. Yeah, in, in a couple hours. <laughs> it will already have happened by the time that you guys see this. They're, they're all over the country. If you have a 2024 Mustang, make sure that you sign up for these. It's going to be a great experience. They have uh, um, a great VIP area for all owners. And it's really an experience that you want to be a part of. Whether it's one where you're going on the cruises with me or whether you're doing ride-alongs with Morgan or, or Vaughn, it's it's a great experience and we'll be partnering with that stuff. Um, you know, SEMA is always on the horizon. We have it's on the horizon. Yeah, we have Mustang Week. We have Carlisle Ford Nationals up in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, I 
I have three or four more events sprinkled in there somewhere and just the cool stuff that we got going on. By the time that everybody sees this, we will we'll have released our Bronco RTR Rover, which is um, an yes. overlanding Bronco with, with a full scale roof rack that you can. It's a 800 pound static weight. And it trust me, I've seen three big dudes up there. It'll hold more. But static static weight is about 800. So we got a lot of new products coming out. We got new merch stuff that we're working on. So the 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 sky is the limit for us and we're going to get a rocket ship so we can go past that did you practice that i did not it comes <laughs> off the cuff dude <laughs> i'm the worst person <laughs> uh, i'm gonna tell you this if, if, anytime i film anything with jaren if i don't get it right in the first shot we will be oh, there all day we know yeah <laughs> we, we just, yeah you've been there you've been there it's <laughs> horrible we, hey, pull but... up the old clips <laughs> i've never seen this man so flustered <laughs> yeah i remember yeah i mean he knows it too it happens yeah. to me as well uh doing vehicle reviews and whatnot i'll start stumbling and i'm like what is going on yeah and he's like my man you need to snap out of it it's hot <laughs> <laughs> oh i got you Caleb. i got you let's do this well uh Jordan, thank you so much. Um, yeah. I'll put a link down below uh, below in the video again for Mustang Unleashed. So if you haven't signed up and they're coming to your area, definitely sign up. Here in a few hours, we're gonna get some rest. We're gonna wake up and do the route all over again. This time with 35? 35 people that we have. And that's because we capped it. Um, yeah, yeah there, there was a lot more people that want to be a part of it, but especially too, since we're gonna be driving through parts of Austin to get to the hills we didn't want to lose anybody so yeah that was that was capped at 35. yeah so yeah yeah i think tomorrow's gonna be a movie yeah it's gonna be great dude so definitely if you guys want to check out that video make sure you subscribe to lee johnson ford subscribe to rtr vehicles youtube channel yep. links down below to all of these channels and we'll catch you on the next episode that was awesome yeah thank you